In this cool fantasy world, there are two kingdoms, the human one ruled by a greedy king named Henry and the mystical one called the Moors. Henry's selfish ways make the humans jealous of the Moors, a magical forest full of elves, fairies, and dwarves who live happily without a king bossing them around. There's this unspoken rule that says people from each kingdom shouldn't go into the other, but there's a myth that says a hero is going to show up and bring the two kingdoms together. A young fairy called Maleficent lives in the Moors' kingdom. She believes in the good things in the world, since forest creatures exist in love and harmony. She also believes in love and spends her idle days building stick figures and coupling them up. One day, she is informed of a stranger's presence by a group of pixies. Maleficent has two horns and large black wings. She is larger and stronger than any fairy in the kingdom. She flies to the location and finds a young boy named Stefan hiding from the Spriggans, tree warriors, after being caught sneaking around. Maleficent demands that Stefan return a stone he had taken from the river. Stefan gives up the stone and she throws it back into the river. She then escorts Stefan out of the forest. Stefan shows Maleficent the castle where the king lives and reveals his ambition to be the king and live in the castle one day. Currently, he lives in a barn after his parents died. Maleficent shares that her parents passed away too. Stefan stretches out his hand to bid Maleficent farewell, but the iron ring on his finger burns her hand. As a result, Stefan removes the ring and throws it away. The gesture warms Maleficent's heart, and she finds herself thinking of the boy she just met. The two start meeting frequently and become friends, and the friendship turns into something more as the years go by. As the two become adults, Stefan's ambitions to be the king overshadow his relationship with Maleficent, and they grow apart. Maleficent becomes the protector of the Moors, and she cannot understand why it is so important for Stefan to be king. One day, Maleficent sees a dust cloud from afar. She flies to the Moors' border and sees King Henry leading a large army into the Moors. He has heard about the strength and unity that exists in the Moors and is afraid of being overpowered. Also, he wants to eliminate the magical creatures living in the forest so he can become the supreme ruler of all the land. Maleficent demands that Henry retreat as he is not welcome in the Moors. But the king says he does not take orders from anyone, making his men laugh. Maleficent mentions that Henry is not her king. Meanwhile, Henry laughs her off and asks his soldiers to bring him Maleficent's head. Seeing no other choice, Maleficent calls for the Spriggans to arise and fight with her. The warriors, alongside the tree dragon, easily defeat King Henry's army. Maleficent flies to the king and hits him, giving him a mortal wound, and the human army is forced to retreat. On his deathbed, Henry promises to pass the kingdom and his daughter's hand in marriage to the man who will avenge him, and Stefan is among the people who hear the king's wish. He sets off to the forest and calls out for Maleficent. He is about to leave when Maleficent appears. The two reunite and talk for a while about all the things that have happened since they were together last. Stefan gives her a spiked drink, and she falls asleep. After confirming she is in deep slumber, Stefan pulls out a dagger, intending to stab her. However, he cannot eliminate her. Remembering what is at stake, Stefan pulls out an iron chain. The next morning, Maleficent wakes up to a horrifying discovery. She finds out that Stefan had cut off her wings while she slept. Maleficent wails in sorrow as Stefan exits the forest. He presents the wings to King Henry as proof of Maleficent's death. Meanwhile, Maleficent drags her weakened body to a dark castle in the forest to heal. The betrayal hits her so hard that she becomes bitter and her heart darkens, affecting the Moors as well. One day, Maleficent spots a man and his dog about to eliminate a raven they had trapped. Maleficent uses her magic to transform the raven into his human form, revealing a man called Diavol. Diavol is grateful for Maleficent for saving his life, and he offers his services to her. Shortly after, Maleficent tasks him with spying on the human kingdom. This is how Maleficent learns that King Henry stayed true to his word, and Stefan had been coronated as king. She establishes a kingdom in the moors with the Spriggans as her guards. She sucks out all the warmth radiating from the forest, transforming it into a dark place. She then orders all the creatures in the moors to bow to her as their king. A while later, Maleficent learns that the king's wife, Layla, has given birth to a girl called Aurora, and the girl is being christened in the palace. 
King Stefan watches as people from all over, including the fairies, declare love and blessings upon little Aurora. The peaceful atmosphere is interrupted by Maleficent's arrival, seeing her scare Stefan, and he maintains that she is not welcome in his kingdom. However, Maleficent says she wants to bless the child as well. Maleficent wishes good health and beauty to the princess. Suddenly, she changes her wishes and declares that while Aurora will have a great childhood, on her 16th birthday, she will prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel and fall into eternal sleep. Stefan pleads with Maleficent to change her mind, and she enjoys watching him beg. She changes the curse, saying that only true love will wake the princess from her deep slumber. Maleficent then leaves the palace, and a wave of sorrow descends on everyone present. Stefan is deeply disturbed by Maleficent's curse. He orders all the spinning wheels in the kingdom to be burned, and locks away their remains in a dark dungeon beneath the castle. He then hands Aurora to the Pixies, asking them to ensure her safety and return her after her 16th birthday. Dievil spies on the Pixies, taking Aurora to a cottage in the woods, and reports this to Maleficent. Shortly after, Maleficent creates a wall of thorns around the dark moors to ensure King Stefan and his army cannot break through. She then visits the cottage where the pixies have transformed into three human women to fit in. Maleficent sees Aurora and feels good about the despair her curse has brought into the human world. Aurora starts crying as she is hungry, but the pixies don't know how to feed her. As her wails travel into the night, Dievel brings her a succulent flower to feed on. As the days pass, Maleficent kills her boredom by rattling the pixies. She does many tricks, like making it rain inside the house, much to the pixies' annoyance. Meanwhile, Stefan orders his men to capture Maleficent. The soldiers try burning the fence, and while that works for a time, Maleficent uses magic to make the burning woods attack the soldiers. Stefan's anger alienates him from his people and his wife. He then remembers Maleficent's weakness and asks for the iron workers to be brought to him. One day, Maleficent watches Aurora play with a butterfly. She plays a dirty trick on the pixies, making them start fighting amongst themselves, and they ignore Aurora. Maleficent watches Aurora follow a butterfly to a cliff's edge. Dievil protests, forcing Maleficent to save Aurora by having some tree branches keep her from falling. On another day, Maleficent is healing a tree when Aurora approaches and greets her. Maleficent tries to send her away, but Aurora hugs her, forcing Maleficent to pick her up. As time goes by, Maleficent grows somewhat fond of little Aurora. Stefan still sends men into the woods to capture Maleficent, but she sees the men and a teenage Aurora intruding by the border. She puts Aurora to sleep while she goes after the men. She quickly defends herself and uses a wolf to scare the soldiers away. After the incident, Dievel complains about being transformed into a wolf as they are filthy, dangerous, and hunt birds. Aurora wakes up in the forest and enjoys watching the magical creatures. The creatures quickly depart when they sense Maleficent's presence. Aurora sees her and assumes she is her fairy godmother, who has been protecting her all her life. She explains that she has always felt Maleficent's shadow watching over her. She is also excited to meet Dieval, who has kept her company as a raven so many times. In the following days, Aurora spends a lot of time in the moors, bonding with the fairies and Maleficent. One day, she asks Maleficent what happened to her wings. Maleficent explains that someone stole them from her. The two walk a while, with Maleficent explaining how glorious and big her wings were. At the castle, King Stefan is summoned by Layla, who is on her deathbed. However, Stefan has lost his mind over Maleficent's capture. Hatred and revenge fill his heart, and he spends most days in a dark room. He refuses to heed the call, opting to continue talking with Maleficent's wings, which he has hung and stored in a cage. Meanwhile, Maleficent realizes she cannot harm Aurora, because she reminds Maleficent of when she was young and yet to discover the evil that lives in the hearts of men. One night, she tries to revert the curse, wishing it to be broken. Unfortunately, her efforts bear no fruit, since, at the time of the curse, she said no power on earth could break the curse save for true love. Maleficent tries telling Aurora about the curse, saying there is evil out there, but Aurora interrupts saying she wants to live in the moors when she is older. Maleficent invites Aurora to stay in the moors as soon as possible, hoping to protect her from the curse that will go into effect the next day, on Aurora's 16th birthday. Aurora pauses by a river, finding a way to break the news to her guardians. 
She is so focused that she does not hear someone approaching her. A teenage boy named Philip startles her. He apologizes and asks for directions to the castle. Aurora shows him the way, but it is clear that the two are attracted to each other. Diavol and Maleficent watch them, and he suggests that Philip is the answer they need to save Aurora. He thinks that Philip is Aurora's true love, but Maleficent protests this. She reveals that she cursed Aurora because she and Stefan know that true love does not exist. Dieval says that just because Maleficent believes in one thing doesn't mean she is right. Aurora bids farewell to Philip and hopes to see him again. She goes to the cottage and breaks the news of her leaving for the moors to her guardians. The pixies are confused and let it slip that Aurora's father is alive. Aurora leaves the house in devastation and rushes to her forest. She calls out for Maleficent and asks why she never told her about the curse. Aurora soon figures out that Maleficent is the evil fairy that cursed her. Maleficent tries to touch Aurora, but she pulls back. She says that Maleficent is the most evil person in the world and runs off heartbroken. Aurora then travels to her father's castle. Meanwhile, Maleficent asks Diaval to find Philip so she can save Aurora if need be. Aurora arrives at the palace and seeks an audience with King Stefan. She is happy to see her father and she hugs him joyfully. Stefan sees his daughter again after all that time, saying that she looks exactly like Layla. However, the reunion is cut short when he orders his guards to lock Aurora in her room as she has returned a day early. She was supposed to get back to the castle a day after her 16th birthday. Back at the cottage, the pixies transform into their fairy selves and rush to the palace, hoping to find Aurora. Maleficent and Dievel track Philip near the river where he first saw Aurora. Maleficent puts him to sleep, transforms Dievel into a horse, and travels to the castle. Seeing Aurora's arrival makes King Stefan predict that Maleficent will come to the castle to see the curse take effect. He calls his army generals and starts discussing a plan to capture Maleficent. As the hour approaches, Aurora's index finger begins to itch as the curse activates. She finds a hidden door and knocks on it. A palace maiden opens it, and Aurora quickly runs out of her room. She enters the castle's dungeon, where the curse fixes a spinning wheel. Aurora is drawn to the needle and pricks her finger. The curse takes effect, and Aurora falls into a deep slumber. Outside the kingdom, Maleficent senses the curse taking over. She fears it is too late, but this makes her more determined to save Aurora. Stefan is furious with the fairies and blames them for Aurora's predicament. He leaves the room to continue planning for Maleficent's imminent arrival. Meanwhile, Maleficent and Diavol reach the castle's entrance. Diavol warns Maleficent against getting into the castle, since the chances of her getting out alive are minimal. However, Maleficent is so determined to right her wrong that she does not care what happens to her. She starts walking to the castle, and Diavol follows, with a sleeping Philip floating peacefully behind them. Maleficent finds the underground entrance full of iron spikes, but they maneuver safely and get into the castle. Maleficent uses Philip to distract the guard watching Aurora's room. She hits the guard unconscious and then drops Philip on the door's entrance, awakening him. The pixies open the door and Philip introduces himself as a prince. The pixies drag him inside the room toward Aurora. Maleficent and Diavol sneak inside the room while the fairies fawn over Philip. They hope he will save Aurora from the curse as he is a prince, but everyone is disappointed when the plan does not work. The pixies drag Philip out of the room, leaving the heartbroken Maleficent and Diavol. Maleficent walks toward Aurora. She cries and apologizes for letting hatred and revenge consume her to the extent of placing a curse on an innocent child. Maleficent vows to protect Aurora for as long as she lives. As she turns around to depart, Aurora opens her eyes and calls out to her. Diavol realizes that Maleficent's true maternal love for Aurora is what broke the curse. On the other side of the castle, Stefan is informed of Maleficent's presence in the palace. Maleficent tells Aurora goodbye and proceeds to exit the castle. She finds the hallway clear, but as she reaches the middle, a large iron net falls on her, trapping her. Aurora runs to help her godmother, but soldiers emerge from all directions and start poking Maleficent with iron, burning her body. A soldier grabs Aurora while Maleficent struggles to free herself. Eventually, she magically transforms Diavol into a dragon. He blows fire to the soldiers and frees Maleficent from the iron net trap. The soldiers turn their attention toward the dragon, while Maleficent yells for Aurora to escape. Aurora runs from the room and hides in a dark room. 
In the hallway, the soldiers trap the dragon. They surround Maleficent with iron shields, forming a circle and leaving her with no escape. She cannot fly since she does not have her wings. Shortly after, King Stefan enters the ring and uses an iron chain to start beating up Maleficent. At the same time, Aurora finds Maleficent's wings flapping rapidly. She cannot unlock the glass cage, so she pushes it until it falls. Aurora is amazed by how glorious the wings look despite being separated from their owner after all these years. At the circle, Stefan removes his head armor and starts mocking Maleficent. He asks her how it feels to be the one begging this time. He beats her while his soldiers chant in support while pounding their shields. Maleficent is sad to see Dievel's capture and torture. Suddenly, Maleficent's wings latch on her back and magically reattach, emitting a bright light. Maleficent rises in all her glory and shares a happy look with Aurora, who has followed the wings. Now, Maleficent can fight back. Stefan orders his men to shoot at Maleficent, and a fierce fight starts. Stefan throws his iron chain at Maleficent, and it anchors on her leg. Maleficent bears the pain and flies off the castle, dragging King Stefan. She flies them both to the top of a tower. The two continue fighting, and while Maleficent has the upper hand, she refuses to eliminate Stefan, saying it is over. She turns to leave, but Stefan attacks her from behind, causing the two to fall off the tower. Maleficent uses her wings to save herself, but Stefan falls to his death. A while later, Maleficent brings down the Wall of Thorns. She opens her heart, bringing back joy and color to the Moors. She crowns Aurora as queen, uniting the human and the Moors' kingdoms. Maleficent and Dievel watch from a distance, as the magical creatures accept Aurora as their queen. The narrator reveals that, in the end, the land wasn't saved by a hero or a villain, but by someone who was both a hero and a villain. Thanks for tuning in. A thumbs up would be amazing because I've got some bills to pay. Hey. With me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast sticky, come get high with me, that's a deal, right?